I'd like to start with uh, maybe a virtual round of applause to Larissa Brett and Barb and the Leah team. Uh, the last couple of years have been so incredibly challenging for any award show, but Leah have not only managed to stay the course, but they've managed to stay generous and offer this, you know, programs like liaisons. Um, and I hope you guys support them with your award entries. So a little round of applause, please pass that on. Um, you're doing great stuff. <clears throat> As uh, you will gather, I'm a, I'm a audio specialist. I sold my soul to audio decades ago. Um, I'm a copywriter at heart. And uh, when I was working in, in different agencies, I realized pretty on that I had the most fun and the most creative satisfaction whenever I was working on the radio and audio briefs. So I thought if I could make a career out of specializing in audio, I'd be happy. And now I do, and I am, So, uh, which is nice. I started in, in London. I started the uh, eardrum in London and since opened offices in Sydney and Paris. Uh, half the time we're working with agencies and creatives like you guys in the same way as you might work with a, a TV production company. We're adding value to your scripts. Uh, we're casting interesting and unexpected voices and directing performances. And I play you thought I'd play you a start by playing you an ad that we did with an agency called The Monkeys, which I like, and if I don't play it, people ask me to play it. So um, here it is. Okay, Bradley, tell the class about your holidays. Yeah, it was really good. My dad built us a new f kitchen. It's got wooden bloody bench tops and some stupid self closing drawers. There was a dishwasher that was a real f and even a f breakfast bar. Mum thought Dad was a Get a kitchen installed without teaching your kids new words. Visit ikea.com.au. We can plan, deliver, and install the whole f***ing thing for you. So uh, that's hopefully a good example of something that we do when we're working with agencies, taking in their ideas and getting the most out of them with casting and directing. Um, the other half of the time, we're working directly with the brands themselves, and often they're investing heavily in audio and they need long-term um, campaign ideas. Uh, this one is for a client that we work with in South Africa called Chocolate by Tomes. Um, they came in for the meeting. We had a meeting with them and they brought in some of the samples. And to be honest, the chocolates were pretty terrible. If there's anyone from South Africa on the, on the, on the Zoom, um, please don't pass this on. But the product itself wasn't great. And uh, I was thinking, how are we going to sell this? But what they did have was loads of different gift boxes, different gift sizes for all occasions. So we made the campaign all about that. Um, here's a couple of examples from that campaign. Buying chocolates for a friend who just got pregnant. The nine piece timeless collection. Buying chocolates for a friend who you just thought was pregnant. The 138 piece extravaganza collection. Chocolates by Tomes. Gifts for any occasion. Buying chocolates as a Christmas gift? The 48-piece decadent three-tier gift box. Buying chocolates as a secret Santa gift? The one-piece red gift box. Chocolates by Tomes. Gifts for any occasion. And one more. Buying chocolates to say thanks for looking after my three cats. The 30-piece Happy Memories Collection. Buying chocolates to say thanks for looking after my now two cats. The one-piece brown gift box. Chocolates by Tomes. Gifts for any occasion. So there's some more examples. That's a long-term kind of platform campaign, which is what we do a lot of with the clients we work with directly. Um, and th those are both those, those examples were radio campaigns, but today the audio universe is so much bigger and audiences have never been bigger. Choice has never been better and the quality of content has never been higher. And so it's, a, it's an amazing time for audio. And uh, for the first time in like 30 years, I'm in a vaguely fashionable industry, which is kind of weird. Um, but, the, the, but now the audio brief that you get at the agency could be for a radio campaign, it could be for a podcast, it could be for a Spotify or a Pandora ad, it could be for a smart speaker, or it could be heard on social media. And whilst the, the fundamentals of good creative are all the same, as kind of summarized by our friend Howard Gossage, 
uh, you know, when he said the buying of time or space is not the taking out of a hunting license on someone else's private preserve, but it's the renting of a stage on which we may perform. So we have to arrive on their stage with gifts. We have to come bearing gifts and we have to perform regardless of what the platform or stage um, uh, that is. But each one of those platforms that I talked about, you know, whether it's Pandora or radio or podcasting, they vary so much in the way that listeners listen. So it's really important for you guys to understand how listeners listen uh, to each of those platforms. So I'm going to start by just going into like touching on um, each of those different platforms and just describing the way listeners listen. And hopefully you'll be able to relate to it if you listen to this sort of stuff. Uh, because when your creative is, is sympathetic to the environment that it's in, listeners really notice it and remember it so much more. And when that happens, the logo becomes louder. Um, so I'm going to talk to you about the audio universe. Now, just, just like Marvel has its uh, superheroes with their own set of superpowers. You've got Spider-Man there with his web-slinging superpowers. You've got Captain Marvel with her alien gifted superpowers. And then you've got the... Um, the DC universe, you got Batman and Wonder Woman, of course, Superman with his superhuman strength. The heroes of the audio universe have their own strengths too, and you need to know how to channel them. Uh, so in no particular order, the first superhero. Leaps music collections in a single bound. Plays playlists with a few clicks and remembers, recommends songs based on your old favorite. It is Streamer. Pandora or Spotify, depending on which country you're in. So uh, streamers superpower is data. Now, um, you can see that they've got long cables for collecting information and she had headphones to monitor your listening habits and uh, a hard drive full of audience data, but data is the key. Now, most people would have thought that the streaming music was, was the superpower, but actually that's what it uses to attract the more than 200 million users across 75 countries. But streaming, collect data uh, from users the, the moment you sign up. It collects the data on music you love, when you're listening to it, where you're listening to it, how long you're listening to it for, how often you're listening to it, and what device you're listening on. In fact, how much data they collect to, to, to know how much is just you just need to look at their their own advertising you can see that they ran this campaign where they they know the specific sort of data for people in in a specific neighborhood and uh they made their own ads about that and so if if they know this much about you know people in the, in, in uh the small sort of like suburbs then you can really use this as a starting point for your creative um, and data means hyper-targeting for your audience. There's an example I'm going to play you where this was used to good effect for an insurance company called Amy. And they use data to develop geo-targeted ads to help keep drivers safe. Um, I'm going to, it's a two-minute case study. Um, and this will just be a good way of uh, showing you how you can really zone into a particular audience uh, with tailored creative. And uh, that's what, what, what streaming can do. A man is dead and dozens hurt. Horror, long weekend on the roads continues. It's a massive problem. It's just getting worse and worse. Something's got to change. No one knows this better than Amy, Australia's number one motor insurer. Every year, they collect comprehensive data from accidents across the country to identify the most dangerous hotspots. We decided to use this data and set out to make the Great Ocean Road a little safer. Since most people listen to music in their cars, we turned to Spotify. We created Amy Warning Spots, geo-targeted Spotify ads that warned drivers in precise locations of the specific road hazards ahead. Using Spotify's advanced geo-targeting capabilities, we were able to pinpoint the precise location of a driver. We then matched this against multiple data sources, including Amy statistics, news items and government reports, to determine whether they were approaching an accident hotspot. They would then hear an Amy warning spot, alerting them of the specific danger ahead. We see you're close to lawn. There are some really tight corners over the next 10 kilometres. Plenty of cyclists share the road. Be careful overtaking in the next few kilometres. 
During the campaign, Amy Warning Spots reached 63% of all Spotify free listeners in our targeted areas, with an impressive 94% completion rate. And the warnings were heard far away from the Great Ocean Road. Heading down the Great Ocean Road. Stay alert over this stretch of road. Driving near Sugarloaf? Sweet! Take care as you drive through this busy Animal Crossing area. While there were no major accidents during the campaign period, we won't take the credit for that. But after the successful launch, Amy warning spots are now being served at the most dangerous locations across Australia. If we can make our roads even a little safer, that's music to our ears. They all have to do that pun. Um, so that's a good example of how uh, you can use the data that Spotify has on your audience to really zone in on a creative idea. Um, but like every superhero, they all have their kryptonite. And in the case of streaming, the kryptonite is where data actually overtakes the idea. And I've heard ads because they, which are on Spotify, for example, that go something like, um, what do you crave most on an overcast Wednesday in March as you stroll to your office in East Sydney? Hmm, cup of soup. Like they have all this information on you and they know where you are and they know what you're doing and they know what the weather's like, but that shouldn't be what the ad is about. So it's boring and, and it's, it's borderline creepy, if you ask me. So use the data to refine the media schedule and use your ad to focus on the benefit and build the desire. Okay, so moving on to the next superhero. Here we go. Comes with the rescue. Entertains and educates during boring tasks and proves there's hope for all of our attention spans. It's the podcaster. Can you hear me all right? Sorry, that music's really loud, but anyway. Um, the podcaster. So, as you can see, the podcast is all about engagement. It's got the magnet for on-demand and, and draws people in. A microphone to whisper sweet, intimate content into your ears and um, levitation to signify the high net worth individuals tuning in. Now, the podcast's superpower is engagement. And when people are listening to about six and a half hours a week, there's been this massive explosion of content. There are like over a million series, 29 9 million episodes. And, and the podcast sharing is becoming like a social currency. So listeners are incredibly loyal to their podcast. Um, and they are huge fans of the hosts. So they turn up to see them live on stage. I'm sure maybe some of you have done that which is why it's so important that your brand sounds like it's also a fan. If you're advertising in a podcast, the tone of that podcast has to be reflected in your ad, whether it's the host read or not. Um, the listeners love the, 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 the format, the content, uh, the on-demandness of it all. Uh, this example I'm going to play you is for an Australian post campaign, which was in Reply All. So Reply All is a US pod podcast, but we've got local advertising. And it dives deep into, uh, you know, the, the reply all goes into sort of how people use the internet and sort of stories around the internet. And this uh, ad was also done in that kind of journalistic style. And there was a setup from the host and the interview style was similar to the show. And it was engaging content, which was kind of like, it, that, as I said, that journalistic style. So have a listen to this example. This episode of Reply All is brought to you by Australia Post. Every brand has a story to tell, like Magpie Goose, a clothing brand that uses bright and bold textiles designed by Aboriginal artists. Magpie Goose isn't just a clothing label, it's, it's everything. It's understanding the full story of the designs, the full story of the artists and where the prints come from and, and what stories they tell. So it's not just wearing the clothes, it's that connection to Aboriginal culture. That's Maggie, the co-founder of Magpie Goose. And with Australia Post, she's able to continue her brand story by customizing each and every package with a unique Magpie Goose Aboriginal design. Creating parcels that have Magpie Goose packaging on it felt like the natural next step to be able to continue this really immersive brand story. I think when someone receives a Magpie Goose branded parcel, they're gonna be so excited to have that beautiful piece of territory artwork greeting them at the post boxes. Give your brand the packaging it deserves by visiting auspost.com.au slash podcast. That's auspost.com.au slash podcast. Okay, so that gives you the, the idea. If you follow the same sort of style and format of the show, then listeners will welcome the ad. Um, 
kryptonite though. The kryptonite would be the opposite, the wrong tone of voice. Uh, and, um, and, and add that is full of that sort of jargon or formal language, which podcasts are never. Um, ads that really try to cut through, they don't work in a podcast environment. They have sound effects and all this sort of stuff that, that none of that stuff works. A couple of weeks ago, I was um, we were doing a long trip, long road trip with the family, and we were binging on um, this series called Murder in Oregon. Um, my 10 year old loves true crime, bizarrely. Uh, but it got to this really sort of intense cliffhanger. And uh, like the, the the voice was saying something like, but the, the gruesome discovery was nothing compared to what lay behind the bedroom door. And then it cut to an ad. Hello, we're Ben and Ashley, gossip hosts with the most. And it was just like this incredible slap in the face from out of nowhere. You The, the audience, the, the, the show had built you up with this really intense sort of um, uh, tension. And then these really annoying voices come on to talk about their gossip show podcast. And, and uh, it was talking about a mood killer. So it, they, are, they become very unwelcome interruptions in your podcast. Um, and if they're totally at odds with the show, you don't want that. Um, so your podcast ad needs to blend in, not cut through. Okay, next superhero, we're gonna race through these. Superhero number three has lightning speed to market, connects people to their local communities in real time, and has the lion's share of listening in whatever country you're in. It is Captain Radio. Now, whether you listen to radio or not, I guarantee that radio will have the lion's share of listeners listening to audio. So uh, you can see Captain Radio surfs the free air airwaves uh, and broadcast far and wide with massive reach antennas to tap into all that's happening right now. A large physique for all that awareness, heavy lifting, and look at that winning personality, eh? So radio's superpower is reach. Typically, it'll reach 90% of the population to wherever you are uh, and with a local kind of flavor. So listeners are habitual. They tune into the same stations on the same day of the week and they build familiarity and become part of the routine, which is why after experiencing a drop in revenue of about 8%, which works out to be eight, 8 billion bucks, Procter & Gamble, the world's largest advertiser, took money off digital and put it on radio. And they're now spending six times as much on radio that they were in say 2016. And what they do is they make sure, and this, this is great radio practice, you need a long-term creative platform really strong brand assets, you know, like audio brand assets, like a consistent voice or audio logo, which I'll go, to, go into in a bit more detail in a minute, and then cut through. You, your ad is cutting through the ad break, unlike a podcast where it's kind of in the middle of content and it's a one-off. In an ad uh, on radio, your ad is in the middle of an ad break, so it really has to own that ad break. All three of these elements I thought were, I hopefully you agree in those, uh, in that Chocolate by Tomes campaign, but also in this Old Spice campaign, which I love. Um, you've probably heard it, but I'm gonna play it anyway. Pomade uh, by Widens. Um, here's a couple of ads from that campaign. Hi, this is Bobby from Quincy, Mass. And I'd love to hear that new song, Pomade by Old Spice. You got it, Bobby. Been playing this one all day long. One more time, certainly not gonna hurt nobody. Pomade by Old Spice. I made You put it in your hair Not your armpit hair But your head of hair Your gorgeous head of hair Pomade Such handsome great hair Available at CVS Pharmacy Hi, this is Laura from Woburn, Mass And I would like to dedicate a song to my boyfriend Jimmy Because he has such great hair What song would you like to dedicate, Laura? Pomade by Old Spice. Pomade. You put it in your hair, not your armpit hair, but your head of hair. Your gorgeous head of hair. Pomade. Such handsome great hair. Available at CVS Pharmacy. It's just so awesome the way they cut their own ad off, you know. But there's some great things in there that just, uh, you know, that long-term create a platform, the strong branding assets with the Old Spice mnemonic, and it just cuts through. It's, um, 
a great example of advertising. Radio's kryptonite is one-off ideas. Um, when, when one brand will be completely different from one campaign to the next or no brand assets. So you don't know which, you don't know what, who's talking to you. There's no clues. You know, they have a different voice or different tracks and the, the ads sound totally different from one campaign to the next. Um, an insincere tone uh, or low frequency. They're the other things that kind of work, re really work against radio. Uh, fourth and final superhero. Call her name and she'll be there in an instant. Has an arsenal of skills which are constantly growing and is happy to do the searching while you use your eyes and hands for other things. It is the voice. Okay, she's small, but she's definitely going through a growth spurt, big head full of skills, big ears because she's always listening to us, and a big mouth because she's a real talker. Uh, voice activation is one of the newest superheroes and in, in the universe. And we're, we're still kind of discovering how best to use its potential, but it's coming and it's, it's going to change the way we live. One thing is for certain, it is the superpowers interaction. It answers when it's called, it listens to your problems, it helps answer your problems, and then it does everything in its power to help you. It's everything my wife would wish I was. But there is no limit to what we can do in terms of instant response once we learn how to harness its power. And like I said, it's, this is still really early days, but you're, it's, it's like a radio you can talk to, and it's like an internet search that talks to you back. So there's a lot of stuff that marketers can do with it once they can figure out how to how to get you know use it. Pandora's testing uh, some voice enabled ad technology um, through their mobile app, which is pretty exciting if they crack it. And if you think about it like this, um, on, on digital platforms, you're monitoring the click through rate of an ad. Soon we'll be monitoring the voice through rates of an audio ad. I'll give you an example, okay? And but in this in, in this time I need you to create the pictures in your head okay so close your eyes and imagine imagine this all right are you there closing your eyes you're driving home from work it's late you're listening to your voice activated entertainment system whatever that is you listen to Spotify or radio station or Pandora an ad comes on for a local pizza place right and you're starving it's late they describe their delicious pepperoni with truffle oil and chili. If you're a vegetarian, you can forget the pepperoni. Suddenly you are absolutely starving. And then the ad says to order one right now and get $5 off. Just say, yes, pizza. And because your account is set up on your voice assistant, it'll know your credit card details. It'll know your address. It'll also know how to geolocate the distance from where you are from your home. So it knows when to start making the bloody pizza. And just when you've got home, you've taken off your shoes and poured yourself a glass of wine, the delivery guy approaches to your front door, goes to knock on it, trips over the dog and the pizza butt falls into a puddle, but whatever. That's the potential of voice. So when your voice can interact with uh, you, uh, so w w when your when your um, radio, if you like, can interact or the ad can interact, then you've got all that potential. Uh, and voice is going to change our behavior. Uh, it's also going to change the way we we interact with the other superheroes, as you can see here in the in the audio universe. So there they are, and there's eardrum in the middle there. Are there any questions before I move on? Because uh, I've got I, I, we can I'll do some questions at the end as well. But if not. Uh, I'll, I'll crack on. So Brett, just interrupt me if there are any questions. Otherwise, I'll just I'll just zoom on. Um, the way to uh, unite all these different platforms <clears throat> is with Sonic branding, and this is where the where the logo comes in. Your audio logo as one of the examples. Now, brands' audio identity should be designed to be as meaningful as the visual identity. And there are three ingredients you need that make up sonic branding. There's music, voice, and sound effects. So I'll just touch on these quickly. Music is the most sophisticated of the three different ingredients, but it's also the most powerful because it, it generates sort of this memorability and distinctiveness. And it also uh, releases endorphins, which will elicit emotional responses. 
And I know I'm going to hit, I'm going to guarantee to elicit an emotional response from you all when I play this sound. Am I right? You've all gone all bingy and you're channeling at home, having gone through lockdown and watching something on a Friday night when you know you can't go out. So Netflix uh, is using music and to suggest the scale and anticipation of what you're about to watch and uh, becoming fast becoming one of the most famous audio logos. Uh, but it really helps the context that you hear that in. It's about you hear it as you're about to watch this awesome thing that you've chosen. Interesting story about how it was created. When Netflix was looking at creating their branding, um, their biggest show at the time was House of Cards. I'm going to play you a promo, which uh, you might see the clue as to where they got their audio logo inspiration. So um, nice little, uh, little Easter egg for you. That's how um, Netflix were inspired to create their audio logo. Um, next ingredient is voice. So uh, th there are at least, I, I think, 25 different variables on how to describe a voice, including uh, accent. And with music there, we're all really in incredibly sensitive to these variables. The perfect voice if you're using it consistently, your, your audience will recognize the brand instantly. One great brand that's done it well for any of the US uh, um, people on the Zoom, you'll recognize this brand. Motel 6 have been running the same radio style for the last 32 years, has the same two sonic ingredients. It has a simple, unique piece of music and a friendly, no-nonsense, uh, self-deprecating voice of Tom Baudet. Here's an example of this campaign. Yikes, hold on. Hi, Tom Bodet. Seems it's harder than ever to find a regular old dog. Everybody wants some designer combination like a Labradoodle or a Malty Poo. And I don't even want to know what a Schnauzeranian Cockapincher is. But I guess if Motel 6 can combine clean, comfortable rooms with the lowest price of any national chain, you can combine anything. So you get a good night's rest and you save a shits a doodle. Well, I'm Tom Bodet for Motel 6, and we'll leave the light on for you. Book online at motel6.com. Cool, eh? So, uh, yeah, um, they've done a great job maintaining that brand. And um, with that campaign, it's been, it's been yeah, a huge success story for radio. Uh, the third component is sound effects. Now, um, basically, sound effects are anything that can't be described as musical voice. <clears throat> and they come under the banner of kind of, uh, you know, sound design or ambience. One good example of that is uh, Zippo. Now, the Zippo lighter is very distinctive and, and recognizable. And Zippo patented the sound and they use that as their sonic ID. And uh, so it's a great example of, of, you know, a brand that's used the sound of their product. But now they're using it to drive awareness of one of their other products, as this radio ad will attest. More than lighters. We also do watches. Get one at Zippo.com. So simple, right? And if your brand has an asset like that, then you find all these different ways of using it. Um, so I would uh, really encourage your clients to invest in sonic brand assets, a consistent voice, an audio logo, and um, maybe a, a brand anthem, a consistent piece of music. And the soon, because the sooner they do, the sooner they can use them across the whole audio and visual universe. This, it's so fragmented where your ad appears that you've written could be in so many different places. Uh, and you might have to adapt each of them, but the way to unite them all could be with that consistent audio. Okay, cool. So I'm uh, now gonna move on to, I guess, the, the specifics of, of your 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 brief when you when you get the brief and 
uh, you are charged with writing a radio campaign or uh, um, a campaign for Spotify or Pandora or podcast. Each one of these things is an opportunity for you as a creative to really show how you can add value. And uh, it's also a great brief because often the, the, the ECDs don't even look at it <laughs> or they, you know, they, they certainly have got, you know, they, they, their focus is probably on the things that are going to earn the agency the most money, which will probably be the TV campaigns. But this is an opportunity for you to make your mark. And I know teams that have got uh, moved up and been promoted because they've done well at award shows with their radio campaigns. And if you can demonstrate that you can really get into this and, and really take a brief uh, in audio and do something interesting with it, that shows what you can do for all the other briefs. So I'm gonna play some examples, which hopefully will inspire you to do this. Uh, we, we work with agencies all the time and creatives to help get more out of, their, uh, out of the idea. And often when I'm judging award shows like Leah, uh, I hear great ideas that, that may not have lived up to their potential because of the execution. And that could be because of uh, the, the, the casting is boring, the performances sound fake, the ad is too long or too complicated or too reliant on subtle sound effects. And just like you work with a TV director, a radio director has the experience and confidence to, to mold your idea and uh, turn it into something that's perfect for the platform and welcomed by the listener and you know, therefore more effective for the client and potentially more irresistible for a judge in an award show. So I'm gonna start with the idea itself and encouraging you to consider how your idea can actually live beyond the ad break. So this first example is for Strepsil. Strepsils is a throat medication uh, if you get a sore throat. And the brief was to come up with an idea that just talked about when you need a Strepsil, the first sign of a sore throat, when you get that first little tickle. And uh, so, campaign was made that was all about that <clears throat> the first <clears throat> sign when you get a <clears throat> sore throat uh, but we also looked at how we could take that idea outside of the ad break and what we did was we cast a bunch of actors to uh, they had 10 days and their brief was to get on the radio stations that were running these ads and just get on air and start talking to the to the presenters uh, request a song, talk about traffic report, or um, participate in the talk back. And when they were on air, <clears throat> they had to <clears throat> cough and <clears throat> apologize for having a sore throat and then say uh, they've got a bit of a cold coming on and they're going to have to have a strepsil. So we would just, it was like guerrilla marketing and product placement kind of all wrapped into one. I'm going to play you a little com uh, compilation of. Uh, some of the uh, actual audio from those radio stations. Stephen, are you there? Hello. Yes, Stephen. How are you going, man? Good, thank you. This is great to have you back. Thank you. Um, listen, I just want to get your thoughts on the state election. Yeah. Um, it seems a pretty... <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. <clears throat> now just you better? Straps on. Okay. You all right there? I saw a throat coming on. Yeah. Always uh, take the strips on the first time of a sore throat. Sure. Uh, just wanted to, um, yeah, it seems a bit of an open and shut case. Do you think? Oh, a bit of chaos out here this afternoon, too. Where are you? <coughs> oh, excuse me. Need a straps all there. I'm um, sitting in Kirribilli. I just, um, uh, are you in the Cessnock electorate? I am. Right. Hang on. I just got to pop a straps all. All righty. <coughs> That's the, better. This time of year. The cold's kick in. you got to, you got to pop a straps all. Yes, indeed. First sign of it. So, um, yeah, I'm in... Oh, that's a good question. As a matter of fact, there are murders that occur in this city that are yeah. placed on page 10 of some it's newspapers. Ridiculous. <clears throat> oh, sorry, mate. I've, I've got a sore throat coming on. Sorry, mate. I'll have to have a, a strep sore or something. Oh, you, I, um, you, you're I'm right. Out. You're with us, Gary? Yeah, I'm back with you, mate. Okay, sorry. okay. So uh, you get the idea. So that that, that um, is a way of taking the idea outside of the ad break. It... it I mean, we didn't ask for permission and we got a bit of, got into a bit of trouble, but it was worth it. The, uh, the campaign just had this extra component to it. It got a bit of um, PR, uh, which was great, but it was just a way, you know, if you, you start thinking about what's well, just an, an ordinary radio brief, what you can do with it and how you can take it on into some places that are outside of the ad break. 
this this next example is for a streaming platform called uh, Binge, and it was originally briefed uh, as uh, a radio ad. And you're probably not going to read the detail here, but this was the print ad that they sent me and said, "We'd like to take this to radio." And you could just imagine that massive radio that that you know how long that ad would be. But all those lines there are about the sort of binges um, that that TV platform caters for. You can you can binge on friends or, or comedy, uh, on sport, on on war movies, on romance. Uh, you know you, all these different things you can you can really sort of dive into and binge on. Uh, so what we did was that I felt like that the only way you're really going to sit through a lot of this is if you can put it in song form. So uh, we made a song to celebrate all the different types of binges and we booked an entire ad break for it to run. So not just one ad within an ad break, we took over the whole ad break. We are for the bingers. The episode sneakers, the small screen peekers, the movie selectors, the series electors, the all watch and no players, the 12 eps in one dayers, the box set fanatics, the reality addicts, the marathon streamers, the thrill chasing screamers, the infinite scrollers, the zoned out strollers. To you all, I say, binge on. The brand new title hunters, the office chatterboxes, the strictly socks and jocks, the musketeering housemates who won't wait if you get home late, the anything will doers, the too hard to choosers, the shameless ugly criers, the mile high flyers, the con artist elite sneaking eps while you sleep, the battery drainers, the series explainers to you and you, and yes, even you. Ben John. Pajamas, the queens of melodrama, the episodic guzzler, the mystery and puzzler, the blurt out the spoilers, the spot the bunny boilers, the sneaky ep without the spouse, the ooh, now look who's in the house. I'm just getting in from nine to five in the city. Nah, I'm kidding. Chuck to sicky. Four days running out of office as I'm busy. Friends are mad, I won't reply. My mother thinks I'm missing. If it's Wi Fi in the blue sky, I'll be up there in my G5. I'm binging upside down till the bungee cord breaks. I'll binge across hot coals with a smile on my face. I'm binging at your baby's christening, whatever it takes. Binge like it's my birthday and I'm taking the cake. To my brave sleep fighters and my scenic route riders, the binge all night is invitation to climbers. Even in your onesies and your snuggies and your rugs. Even if you hate to say you've probably had enough. No matter who you are or how you look or where you're from, I'm saying to my binges, hear me now, binge on. Yeah, to all of my binges, this one's for you. The public transporters, the new season reporters, the prolific experts binging on till it hurts, the devoutly devoted who leave no episode unquoted, the lounge room fashionistas, their reinvented misters, the knitters and the sewers, the pruners and the mowers, the virginal beginners, the been there done that sinners, the love story swooners watching under their dooners, the porcelain queens in the bathroom with their screens, the sit still and stares, the vampire slayers, the Sunday delighters, the closet screenwriters, the distracted doggy walkers, the spooners and the forkers, the binge on the first daterers, the staunch ignore the haterers, the living room detectives, the lock em up collective, the influential streamers, the plotters and the schemers, the confused and the dazed, the calm and the crazed. Binge. It's unturnoffable. So that was pretty big. 
<laughs> that was a mega production. Um, and uh, I mean, the scale of the thing kind of works with the product itself. It's all about binging and all that, you know, it's, it's almost like the ad is, is binging as well. Uh, but, you know, the, uh, if, if radio stations are kind of elastic in some ways. Uh, there's no like set, t they, they have news on the hour and things like that. But if you came to them with an idea that they thought was pretty cool and you came with some money to, to, to run it, uh, there's a good chance that they'll do it. So, and, and that's, that goes for Spotify and, and Pandora and, and, and podcasts. So the time is a little more elastic and flexible. So be brave with, um, with, with what you go back to. It may have, go back with, it may have been briefed as a 30 second ad or a 15 second ad, but if you can come up with a, with a good case and that the impact of what you're making is gonna be so much bigger if you, uh, go outside of those the confines of the 30 second ad then they'll listen and the clients will listen this example i'm going to play you now uh for a game that we an ad we did years and years and years ago uh this should demonstrate i guess the, the bravery in casting that you need to have i so many great ideas fall with really terrible casting um they all just sound like radio people or voiceover people and the acting is not great, or they don't sound authentic. This was really important that it sounded authentic because this idea was all about the threat of this character called Virtua Cop and how he was a, coming to clean the streets of London from all the criminals. And so uh, the original casting brief was to find someone who'd been in you know, gangster movies like some of the Guy Ritchie movies, uh, but I couldn't help hear the actor uh, whenever I heard them, I could just hear them trying too hard. So uh, I, I, I went to the creative team and I said, I'd like to just like uh, try something a little different. I'd like to cast someone who is currently in prison. And um, I approached a, a vicar uh, who was the chaplain at a, at a prison and said uh, we were doing some project and could I do an interview with um, an inmate, you know, someone who's maybe coming to the end of their sentence and uh, would be you know, interested in, in, in having a conversation for a, for a school project, kind of student project thing. Anyway, the, um, I had to pay 500 pounds to the chaplain's fund, but he uh, let me go and have this interview with this guy. And so we, uh, I, once I was. So do you, can you hear this? Life? Well, I think everybody values their life. You'd have to be a complete moron if you didn't value your life. And what about the lives of others? Well, obviously I value those that are close to me, my family and children, I value them above everything. But uh, if a stranger, let's say, got in your way and tried to stop you on a job, you wouldn't think twice about hurting them? No, no, no compunction whatsoever. So is that why you carry a gun? Blue says I carried a gun. And, and would you use the gun against the police? Blue told you that I carried a gun. Where would you get your information on carrying a gun? OK. Um, but do you think the police should be armed? Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't care. And um, what do you think of Virtual Cop's policy of shoot to kill? Uh, I don't understand or know at this moment in time who Virtual Cop is. Well, Virtual Cop, he's killed like, hundreds of criminals so far. Well, unless I actually come up against a guy, he wouldn't bother me. But doesn't the idea of a cop with like a 45 Magnum uh, with infrared sights and armor piercing bullets bother you? If it didn't bother you, you'd got to be brain dead. Yeah, it does bother me. Virtua Cop, Game and Gun 59.99. If you want arcade classics, you want Sega Saturn. The game is never over. Cool. Well, hopefully you heard that. And sorry about the hiccup. I don't know what happened there, but everything just started to implode at one time. But that's an example of some creative casting. You know, that guy sounded so authentic and real uh, because he was, he was a prisoner. <laughs> well, he was coming to the end of his, his, his sentence. And, um, but that authenticity is such a compelling um, part of audio. You know, we can tell bullshit so easily in, uh, by, by the voice. And uh, sometimes you've got to take risks with the casting and sometimes it 
doesn't work sometimes it does like that example did work and that was briefed out as a 30 second ad but we ended up making a 90 as well and the client absolutely loved it and, and wanted to run with that um so uh yeah learning when to take some of those risks uh also just looking when you've written a script sometimes uh you, you, it'll get approved and you won't look at it until the moment you arrive at the studio and uh, you're about to make it. The, the actor's there and uh, everyone's ready to go. And the sound engineers are ready to go. Uh, it doesn't have that same kind of sifting processes as uh, say a TV script will have. And sometimes having a, a, an independent sort of view, a fresh pair of eyes looking at it can really help. And that could just be another creative team that isn't working on the job to run it past them. Uh, but I would encourage you to, again, to use a director to, for that role and uh, in this example, the script was given to me and said, um, the, the, this is all about the intensity of, of this particular product, this KFC chicken. And originally the idea was that the repeated line, uh, how intense uh, was to be said by this really sort of uh, strong sergeant, uh, army corporal kind of character. Uh, and when I read it, I thought, actually, it's funnier that that character, that really aggressive, sort of intense character, says the silly lines, and the weaker character does the how intense lines. So we ended up swapping the characters around, and it worked a treat, and this was the end result. How intense is KFC's new firecracker chicken with double crunch and Tabasco? Intense, like typing Google into Google. Uh, more intense. Like stepping on a piece of Lego with no shoes on. Well, uh, more intense than that. Like going I... in for a handshake, and then it turns into a hug. More intense than Like that. finding out you're adopted. Uh, less intense. Uh, like putting a battery in the wrong way around. No, 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 now you're not intense enough again. Intense, like jumping out of a plane. Yeah. Without a parachute. Yes. While you're on fire. Yes, that's and it. And then writing an awesome poem about <laughs> it. What? No, you've lost Like it. ordering still water and then getting sparkling. That is literally the opposite of Like intense. lighting a standing candle to make the room smell all nice. You said intense, not incense. Like watching a documentary about mating rhinos. Wow. On your grandma's TV. All right. The new KFC firecracker Wait, chicken. Wait, what are they doing, Nana? It's intense. Make them stop, Nana, please. So uh, the, the comedy was actually through the big serious voice actually saying the ridiculous lines. Um, and sometimes you don't get that opportunity to make those changes because, um, well, you, you, you haven't had a chance to really sort of workshop it. And uh, someone who does it a lot will be able to give you that advice and go, you know what, there's, an, there's another way of doing this. It's the same idea. And this is no different from the way you'd work with your TV director. Um, I'm going to skip along to... Uh, uh, hello. Hi. My name this uh, next example here. Um, and finish with this. And then if you've got any questions, I'm happy to take them. This is um, the final case study. And it's uh, an idea we worked on with an agency, um, CHE Proximity in Sydney. And they came to us just before the Olympics with, um, uh, with their client, Samsung. And because there are no crowds at the Olympics, they wanted a way to show the support to the Australian athletes. Um, the challenge was a way to, they, they, they came to us with this challenge of how can we show support and how can we uh, enhance the performance of our athletes with sound and, and, and uh, visual. And being true audio specialists, we said we can get rid of the visual stuff for a start, we don't need that. Uh, but we looked at the way music has the power to enhance the performance of somebody of, of, and, and doing anything, but specifically in this case for athletes. And um, so we dive deep into uh, the, the performance enhancing properties of music and created songs specifically for these athletes. In other words, we made audio doping. This music affects the athletes by 1%. 1% is huge. How they feel in their mind can be the difference between winning and losing. Nothing is going to be able to replace the crowds, but I think music can help fill the gap. Samsung and Optus are providing that support directly into their ears. Anything that we can 
improve performance that's in the spirit of the game and not harmful to any athlete. Most athletes in sports science are going to utilize or recommend. We all instinctively know what music does to us when we're listening to it. Rarely are we ever given a track that has been made specifically for us. The opening section has isochronic tones. There's science behind it that says that it helps uh, to create focus and concentration. You know, having a song that is at a certain beats per minute, it translates well to how many strokes per minute you're going to be taking in a race. If you personalize it with uh, something uh, more meaningful, here you will, you will really maximize the speed at which is going to, to reach this, uh, this optimal state. We added affirmations to see whether having their own words would give them that extra connection and boost. Movie. We could see increases in the brainwaves that are associated with that flow mindset. They all across the board perform better with the music. They improved his 2K time trial by five seconds. Yeah, I definitely felt it. Every beat, every lyric, every key, every instrument, every, every vocalist has been chosen specifically for a person in order to help them perform a specific event. That's never been done. Hey, Mac. Howdy. How are you? Can we tell you a little bit about the track that we've composed for you? You know, your musical taste, particularly for your pumped up mind state, was really in that progressive rock slash metal genre. You mentioned 38 being a good stroke rate, so we've worked the track at a multiple of 38. Between the heat and the fire and the 400, I just kept saying, you can do this, I got this, over and over and over, until, you know, it was so cemented in there that I didn't believe anything else. I will be blasting it in my ears. You mentioned uh, there was a quote that you found quite motivating. Yeah, um, it's basically there are ups and downs, but whatever happens, you have to trust and believe in yourself. There are always ups and downs, but I trust in myself now. We were really lucky that we were able to get Shepard to sing this for you. You're kidding. Hearing us performing a track that was written specifically for her, with her mantra in mind, uh, I, I think it's going to at least give her that extra 1%. There's actually a bit of a sample inspired by a recording we tracked down of you in the back of the bus with the rest of the team singing your Matilda song. Oh, no way. I have the biggest goosebumps. Oh, that's so cool. What I really like about music and, and the role that music plays in my life is that it's really powerful when it comes to engineering emotion. I often uh, talk about uh, nerves and nerves are a bit of a superpower. They're an indication that I'm exactly where I need to be. This will be my He's an incredible human, an incredible athlete, and uh, to have the honour of being in his ears, it's a bloody cool thing. Oh, that that track was oh far out. <laughs> I can't wait to listen to it again. <laughs> you know, people might say like, oh, how do you know something's contributing to success? And the only thing I can really say to that is, I'm going to listen to it every day, and that's the only way that we'll find out. <laughs> I listen to a lot of like disco, a bit of 80s rap occasionally, but yeah, lots, lots of disco stuff. They get me like hyped up. And what Aussie artists uh, are your favorites? I love Tash Sultana, Carice Eden, Alex the Astronaut, definitely all of those. This is the we asked you about affirmations and you had just the most simple, cool one, which was send it. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I can't believe that Alex Yes around this. It's too much for me to handle. It's so cool, like helping someone do better at the Olympics. That's crazy. The idea that Samsung and Optus are getting an Australian artist to lend their support for an Australian athlete 
for an event which is the biggest sporting event in the world. Seeing their responses has just made it made us all worth it. It's gonna be the only song I listen to while I skate now. Like that's a song that I would add to my playlist in a heartbeat. I can't wait to use it at the Olympics. I'll be on the start line alone, but I won't feel alone, that's for sure. That is my lot. Look, and thank you for letting me take you on this journey through the audio universe. And hopefully you've seen some of the opportunities that are out there because uh, it's, there's, it's, it's a really exciting world with so many new platforms coming online and the audience is growing. Um, you, as a creative, it's really important that you know how to harness all the things that you can do in audio and be the, be the expert in your agency that with, with the most understanding and because the briefs are going to keep coming. And I look forward to um, working with you and maybe judging some of the work that you've, that you enter into the award shows um, and, uh, and hope that um, you, you, that this has been useful and, and uh, that you, you managed to get a little bit of the, the passion that I had for the medium and you can channel that into something bloody incredible. Um, yeah. Thanks for your time. And, and if you've got any questions, I'd be I'm very happy to, to, to answer them. Yeah, Ralph, we had a few questions from uh, Christy, Omar, and Vicky, I believe. So, you know, o Omar, if your mic's open, why don't we start with you? You could uh, go ahead and ask Ralph your question again. Cool. Um, thanks, Ralph. That was, that was killer. Thanks for sharing with us. I really enjoyed it. Um, no worries. Um, uh, my question comes from, I, I wish I saw this maybe earlier today because uh, I was in a client presentation, um, literally the Savo, and me and my partner, we had an idea. We were presenting scripts for TV and then we had an idea. We thought these scripts could really do with a really awesome sting and we think the sting is going to work great for the brand. We kind of have an idea in our heads that we can sort of communicate to each other, but we have no idea how to articulate this to the client in the creative presentation, mm. like we would a visual thing, right? With scripts and, and mood board and stuff. Um, I was just wondering if you had any tips on how to sell clients on more audio related things in a creative mm. stage when it's a lot harder to kind of mock that up, if you will. Yeah, well, uh, in, I mean, references, we use an awful lot of references and, uh, Sometimes a uh, reference is better than a demo. If you uh, can, you have a, like, for example, there's a voice that you might want to, you, that you imagine reading the ad that you're about to present. Uh, play a couple of examples of people that they will know, could be famous people from famous scenes in movies and say, this is kind of the territory that I'm imagining. Think this kind of age, this kind of actor or this kind of woman uh, in this kind of tone. And then they, that can help get um, the personality in their heads. Sometimes when you present a voice reel, it's awful because they, they're reading terrible ads and they all sound like terrible shitty voiceovers who are pretending. So find a scene that might be a good reference. If it's music, then play two or three references. So you're basically creating an, a sonic mood board um, of references before you actually read or present the thing that you want to actually sell them it sell in and that just helps get them and, it's, and it does exactly the same as your visual mood ball you know it, but it just helps them tune into the the, the the territory that you've got a sting is hard because you're talking about like a two or three second little mnemonic and at the moment that doesn't exist uh and it exists in your head but it doesn't exist anywhere else and um i think your best off to try and just communicate the sort of feeling you want to communicate and then do that as a specific job later. And you'll need experts to come and help you with this because it's so easy to jump to execution when you're doing audio logos and you start coming up with a three note sequence and they all sound exactly the same as every other three note sequence. And uh, they all sound a bit like Intel and they all sound a bit like um, all the other things you've heard before. And if you don't spend time doing it, then it actually just becomes a bit generic. 
And uh, the, the, the challenge is for those that in that short period of time, you've got to infuse as much meaning as possible. So I would tend not to present something in, in that sort of environment. It's almost like saying, like your logo, we haven't come up with your logo yet. Um, we've got an idea. Here's a, here's a drawing of the, the logo that we, that we want to like sell your entire business forever on. And uh, you would never do visual design like that. So I, I would hold back something as important as a long-term brand asset as an audio thing, unless it's a little gimmicky thing for one campaign. And if it's just, was that what it was, Omar? Was it just like for that one campaign? Did that little sting just relate to that one campaign? Was it going to be, or was it going to be like a long-term asset? No, it was, we were hoping it would become a long-term asset, but it wasn't something they asked for. So um, yeah. Yeah. I think presenting the rationale for it was absolutely the right thing to do because there's so many audio platforms as I was talking about, but like their visual logo, it's not something that you can rush into or that you can add another hour onto the end of the radio session and experiment with. It just, it, it's, uh, it's too important to get right and too easy to get wrong. <laughs> so um, I'd sell it in as a concept and maybe do the, the audio mood boarding um, so you play them longer sections of things like five or 10 seconds or 15 seconds here. This is kind of the energy, the flavor, and we're going to create something specific for you that'll capture the soul of your brand and uh, we will use experts to do it. But yeah, if you, if you half sell it in, you might talk them out of it. Cool. <laughs> Makes sense. Thank you. Thanks, Omar. Uh, Ralph, I'm going to read this next one from you. This one's from uh, Christy Ko. She just wanted to know earlier in a presentation when we were talking about superheroes uh, for the superhero for The Voice, was there any creative kip kryptonite for that superhero? Uh, good question. I think that the what's, what people are finding at the moment is when they're creating skills, for, so Voice is so new everywhere around the world is trying to figure it out at, at right now. Um, a lot of brands have created skills that like, you know how everyone rushed to create an app um, a few years ago, like these skills that uh, like brands are creating for Alexa or you know, Google. Um, the only ones that are working are the ones that are truly a utility. So people can actually use it to improve their life. No one is going to ask Alexa for an ad. No one's going to say, hey, Google, or hey, Alexa, or whatever. Just, uh, and, or if they ask for something that they think is going to be useful and they get an ad, it'll, it'll be the last time they ever use that skill. So the kryptonite would be self-serving uh, content. Anything that the advertiser is, is creating to promote the advertiser is not going to last in that in that environment it has to be a, a utility it has to be something that will help that consumer do something in their day uh so that's your threshold you, so i guess the, the, the criteria that you have to approach but like i said it's also new um we haven't quite figured out you know uh, consumers haven't quite figured out how to use it and brands are still in the process of trying to work it out themselves so it's pretty exciting all right, thanks, Ralph. Uh, let's do one or two more. Uh, Victoria, I'm going to call you up to the stage. You had a good question from earlier. All right, we're going to try uh, not to cough. Sorry, I was off camera. Asthma. Yay. Um, but I've been finding with a lot of projects uh, that I've been on or, or not been on, been witness to, um, audio stings have really been uh, seeing like an uptake in trend, kind of like a renaissance. Um, and as you were talking about audio logos, I was wondering if um, if that's becoming more of a, a, a brand best practice for audio now, or if that's just a nice detail you're finding that good campaigns use to really be iconic. I think it is best practice because there's so many different audio environments that a brand can exist now. So to have that consistency across their campaign and future campaigns is really important and have it in their TV ads, in their online videos, as well as their radio ads and as, as well as all that content. So it unites them. It's definitely best practice. Um, 
but I was saying that, like I was saying to Omar, it's really important that you do it well and you do it properly and you do it thoroughly because if you just like, there's some terrible examples of audio logos that have been created quickly and uh, they can do more damage to a brand and you end up having this real buzz killer at the end of a really cool ad and suddenly the ad stops and it's this bizarre, unrelated a little phrase uh, that doesn't sort of fit the, the rest of the world that you've created in the ad. Um, so there's, there's a lot to consider, but the principle of having one is absolutely right. And it, it is, it's, it's enjoying a renaissance at the moment because audio is so, has become so popular. Um, but find the experts in your marketplace that, that do it. Um, and you know, reach out to me, and I might be able to put you in contact with some people, depending on where you are. Uh, but um, it's it's definitely worth taking time out and making it a special project to actually work out what's going to be the best. How you're going to capture the sonic essence of that brand, and it might mean making a longer piece of music um, from which you derive a short little sting from. Like you create a brand anthem. That's often the way we approach it. So you create a longer piece and then within that is like a repeated phrase that helps establish it. Um, but consistent brand voice. So all of those things can really help make their advertising more effective. Thank you. No worries. Okay, guys. Um, any last questions? Now's the opportunity. We have Ralph. Going once. So um, I have one. Great. So uh, uh, recently, I was working on one of the uh, one of the ads for Spotify for one of the uh, clients that we had. So from the spot, I'll tell you the spot that we wrote about. We we were planning of writing something like we are making a sound mix of the voices that irritate us uh, while we are working uh, while we are doing work from home. The I mean the kitchen sounds and all sound the baby crying and all these things and making a sound design with that. But a very weird, observe, not observation, uh, uh, feedback came from the Spotify team, not the client. The client was okay and very cool with the uh, spot. Then when, when we went to the Spotify team, they said that this will do harm to your client rather than doing good to your client. And we said, why? And the answer was that these are irritating sounds. So nobody wants to listen to irritating sounds, even if it has a good idea behind it. Mm -hmm. It didn't make much sense to me, but do you think that's right? That we should not, I mean, uh, on an audio uh, platform, the execution. I do. Huh? Uh, I, I, know what, I know why you did what you did with the idea, but I know what Spotify is saying. If you, again, it's about the environment. On Spotify, you are listening to you, your music, right? Even though mm -hmm. it's the free version, you are still listening to your music. You think you have selected it, you've curated it, and it is your playlist. Right. So as an advertiser, you have to almost be apologetic in interrupting <clears throat> that person's music. You have to, uh, you have to be um, not break contrite. Mood, basically. You can't break the mood. Yeah. yeah. And if you come in, I mean, it's, the advertiser that, that does this needs to almost say, look, I'm sorry. I know I'm in the middle of your playlist, but you get it for free if I can just tell you about this thing. And the tone of voice has to be uh, completely different from an ad in an ad break where you're trying to cut through and you're trying to engage and trying to uh, take the listener from whatever world they're in now into your world. On Spotify, you want to keep the mood going. You want to feel like it's it's fine. Okay. I won't, I'll only be a sh I'll only be a minute here. I'm going to just talk you through this thing and then get back to your music. It's oh. uh, it's a different it's a different way of listening, and uh, I, I understand why Spotify have said it. Just a word on on sound effect based ads. Uh, the environment that any listener is listening to any audio is usually live, and it's you're surrounded by things in the world. Um, other sounds, you know, uh, 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 um, indirect sounds that are that are all around you. So 
don't expect the listener to to be bothered to work out the detail to try and get um, the you know the, the clue from the 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 bee's wings morphing into the hummingbird wings, which morphs into the eagle, which morphs into the into the plane. The listener is going to be zoning out way earlier. They just okay. go. This is too too hard. I'm just going to think about. They dinner. have to decipher decipher it. It fails the. It fails the test. Okay. Thank you. No worries. It doesn't mean you can ha you can't have those sounds, but you need to make it easier for the listener. And usually, some voice or people in the scene help tell the story a little more clearly. <laughs> 